Okay, I was able to get on earlier than I thought I would be able to. I'll see what happens. situation okay good yeah that actually works hey what's up smitty uh, oh my god yeah you know what since i since i told everybody i was going to start later uh, I, uh i'm going to give it a hold to about 1205 ah we don't really need to do that we got enough for y'all what's up altar and what's up Miss skip troy hey hey bro all right good well welcome <laughs> welcome to glue wednesday those of you, if it's your first time on the broadcast, uh, what you need to know is that the, the reason I named it Glue Wednesday is because a lot of times people tend to want to say that Wednesday is hump day. And since I like to, you know, turn negatives into positives and just give another outlook, I believe that hump has a connotation of us needing to get over. Whereas I, so I see Wednesday actually as the, the real excuse me, middle of the week, because remember hump day, remember hump day is supposedly supposed to be the day that you're getting over the hump of, of your know, work week, but everybody doesn't work Monday to Friday. So it's a Wednesday may not be, may, Wednesday may be the start of somebody's day just as easily. So, but in the real world, it certainly is the middle of the seven days of the week. So that's why I call it Glue Wednesday, because Wednesday is the day that keeps the weekend and the week beginning together. And of course, my glue is an acronym, G-L-U-E, God's love undoes everything. Not to say that it separates things, that love separates things, but that whatever you're going through, which P.S., by the way, is a self-fulfilling prophecy, because we say we're going through. We don't ever say that we are stuck. You know, or, or sometimes we do. Ooh, let me take that back. Sometimes people say they're stuck, but they still say that they're going through. Okay, but whatever you're going through, God's love will help you make it, and it will glue it back together. It will undo everything. Every single problem and challenge that you've had in your life has either been undone or it may be ongoing, but it's ongoing and it's on its way to a solution. You just have to have the faith and the patience. And in and and these days and times, which are P.S., by the way, no different than the past days of time, because all it is is that now we're living it. You know, you're at a different age. You're in a different income bracket. You're in a different life situation. So you may see what's going on now as, whoa, what is going? The world has changed. What's going on with this world? But you know what? Every generation has come to that point. I, you know, and I, I especially like to remind our adults, is that children mock and mirror adults. If you're the adult that they mock and mirror, you shouldn't have a problem with them. You know, because uh, even with the issue that I'm going to be talking about today, the, the Me Too, uh, the hashtag Me Too post that women are, are, are joining and doing regarding being harassed, sexually harassed. You know, uh, hey, when I was uh, a young guy, you know, uh, hitting puberty, um, you know, you know, see, we've got it redefined now. I was a young guy hitting puberty. Yeah, in school, I used to try to look under the girls' dresses, you know, drop my pencil on the floor and look under their dresses and, uh, you know, try to cop a feel on the elevator in the hall as I, you know, became a teenager, did it on the, on the trains. Yeah, I'll admit it. Because, see, you know, we didn't have it defined as sexual harassment. But, yeah, a lot of men, I think, if that, that, that becomes part of it, is recognizing that we have been a part of that challenge, uh, and and it just wasn't it just wasn't highlighted as an issue. But now, as grown-ups, now we're saying, oh yes, this is an issue, and uh, you know this is this is a, a, a disrespect and a infringement upon women's rights and and all you know. And so yeah, we're looking at it differently. So let you know, let's let's you know, I think that honesty is a good place to start as well. Uh, I think that there are a lot of issues and distractions in our world, and it doesn't mean that we have to ignore them. We just have to remind ourselves to not let them drain you. Just don't let these issues and distractions drain you, because we all feed into them. We've all been a part of it, and you don't, you can't support all of them, though you are a part of each one. And I've written this down because I want to make this statement: you can't support all of the issues though you are a part of every single one. We are all a part of this issue right now. So however you're thinking about it now, however you thought about it in the past, you're a part of the issue. 
And I, that's why I opened up by letting you know my part in the issue in the past, which is now how, you know, which, which has evolved to how I'm looking at it here in the present. And, what, and, and so, uh, you know, pick a few and give them your quality energy. You can't support every single issue that there is. And, and that's why I call some of them distractions, because sometimes it's a distraction from what's really going on. Sometimes there's a, big in it, a bigger issue. And, and um, somebody comes up with something that stops you from addressing that issue. And so it, it can become a distraction. Or if you've got enough energy going into your issue and then you try to deal with another issue, that can become a distraction and take away from some of that power. Every, come on, everybody's going to handle the different issues. You don't have to handle every single issue. You don't have to be on the front line of every issue. Because it, it splits you too much, and it takes away your quality involvement in that issue. You may give up a little sooner if you spread yourself too thin. So, you know, find the issue that you really want to uh, support and give it some quality time. Give it some quality energy. Now, one of my number one titles and my number one honor is, you know, because I'm not a big person who's into, you know, titles and stuff like that, but my, the title that I hold most dear it's uncle. I have it on my business card. I have it on my website. I have it on my Facebook profiles and everything. I like being called uncle. It's an honor to me because I love my nieces and nephews. And, and I've got 22 maternal nieces and nephews, but I've got plenty of other nieces and nephews from the volunteer work I've done, the coaching I've done, the mentoring I've done. And I thank you who are out there looking, and you know that you are one of my nieces and nephews, and you know, I, you know, I, I'll sometimes say my spiritual niece, niece and nephew, but I, you know, very rarely minimize the quality of our relationship because the fact that you may call me Uncle Sporty or Mr. Sporty, you know, or, or just – uh, you know, big brother, you know, I mean, these are things that make a difference in my life. And, and, I, and I don't question the, the quality of our relationships. I love you, love you, love you. Okay. So uh, this is, that's why I say this is an issue that I think I can give quality time to the me too, uh, or not, not just the me too, but just the, the lowering uh, and the awareness of the sexual harassment issues that our sisters uh, nieces, nep nieces, uh, oh, yeah, nephews too, because we, sexual harassment is going both ways, but we're focusing on women right now. And partially because if you, I don't know if your color is looking good because in the light, but this is a pink shirt, because let's not forget that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. But let's, let's also remember to wear a pink shirt in November, December, January, because, you know, we, we've got to always be aware of these uh, illnesses or these um, uh, diseases and uh, that are uh, throughout our lives is 24 seven. Never, I always say, never let a man-made calendar uh, control your life. So it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but we always, you know, women who are dealing with it and men who are dealing with it because breast cancer is not a female um, disease or illness. It's a, it's a breast illness, okay? So, Always deal with that, okay? Let me not get off track so I'll keep us on time. That's why I write my notes down. But give it the quality time that it deserves. And this is one that I've actually, and the thing is, what I'd like to talk about today is the fact that, see, I've always respected women. My sister, as you may know, Zetin, is born 10 months after me. And, and I grew up always respecting women because in my mind, I used to say, you know, like they say, what goes around comes around. And so I said, if I mistreat women, somebody will mistreat my sister. And, and, you know, that's just how I grew up thinking. So I've always respected women. I've always tried to treat them the best I could. And I throw in tried. You know, again, I, you know, hey, you know, we, we make mistakes. You know, have I done some stupid things? Yes. You know, a lot of times even these days, you know, people will say to me, well, sport, you're not married, man. You're a good catch. How come to the, you know what? I wasn't always such a good catch. I've done some knucklehead things. I can't look back and say every woman that I've dated, or, you know, or even been out on a date with was something was wrong with her. Sometimes I was the problem. And, and I'm okay with admitting that because I'm so excited about my growth. And, and, I, and I'm so happy that I can thank those women. And sometimes they were girls, you know, when, when we were younger, 
because you know, hey, we were experiencing life and and we were liking one another as whatever. And remember when we were in um, elementary and and uh, junior high school, and so we say we go with somebody. Okay, so come on, y'all. We you know really look at your life and stop letting the headlines and the media control how you think. Every single comment that you hear. Don't just decide, oh, that's the way it is. No, think about, wait a minute, how does that apply to me? And I want to, and just a, you know, just in case you're listening, do not send me an inbox message of something that you want to go viral. I have to laugh. I say, boy, technology is wasted on the old. If you want something to go viral, you have to post it on your Facebook page so that it can get likes and loved and comments on and then share. But a lot of times what we'll do, somebody sends us an inbox saying, oh, look at this, and this needs to go viral. And they do it because somebody sent it to them on the inbox. But then they don't post it on your page. Come on, y'all. We have to use technology. We created this thing. So you have to use technology properly. Stop beating up the kids. Oh, they don't have to learn anything. They just use technology. Look at them. They don't even need to look at the manual. Well, you know, maybe you don't need to look at the manual either. Maybe you just need to check out how to use the technology or ask one of the kids. They'll tell you if they know. But you know what? How about you beat them to the punch because we invented the technology. So slow down. Stop being afraid of technology because that's really sometimes what we do. We're afraid of it. And so therefore, we, we don't take the extra time and it need, we need to learn it so that we can show that we are proficient at using it. Kids didn't come up with the shortcuts. They grew up with the shortcuts. And that's because we have put stuff into place so that we could have an easier time. Because why? We want to cut down our workload so that we can have a longer um, lifespan. So, you know, come on. If all of us, we're all in this together. So like I said, all the issues impact and affect us. So what I'm going to do today, again, is share three poems which I hope will remind you to step up your respect as well as keep you on track. Because as I say, I have nieces and I want my nephews to know. So this first poem is from my, and, and what I like is that I, I've, I've got four books of poetry. But I'm going to read a poem from three different poems from three different of my books, which, which, which I'm glad to say that shows excuse me, that my mindset, well, two of them are from the same year, but one of them is from a different year. And, and that's the thing. You want to look at your consistency of your message. That, that's one of the ways you want to judge your life. Stop letting people, you know, uh, pigeonhole you into where you are now. Look at your life and see if there's been a consistency in your message as well as see if there's been a change. And then when you see what the change is, especially if it's a positive change, give yourself credit. Recognize that, you know, we all started out as knuckleheads. You know, the people... The, the kids that we want, and I know I'm wearing kids out, but the kids we want to uh, make comments about how they're wearing their clothes and, and their language and how they don't disrespect people on the street. You know, hey, were you ever that kid? It's a different time. Have, you know, have you taught your kid? I, I believe that my, especially my maternal nieces and nephews, and believe me, a, a, a huge amount of those of you who I call my nieces and nephews, I bet you don't go out there respect, disrespecting elders because you know that that's something that I don't believe in. And that's something that I've helped you cultivate and them cultivate in terms of understanding what respect is. Because if you show them respect, then they will give you respect. It's just like when people say to me, man, you don't look 62. You know, I'm like, well, you better redefine 62 because I'm 62. And I ha I'm not giving one of my years back. So I'm not going to knock down the fact that I'm aging. It's my, it's my joy and it's my blessing to age. But why do they say that? Because some of the 62 and some of the 52-year-old people they know have a nasty look on their face, have a nasty disposition, and they, and they treat them with disrespect. So therefore, you know, they can't possibly believe that at my age, I've still got this young outlook and, and, uh, and jovial personality, and which, which to me, by the way, is why I think I don't look that way, because I smile. I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying watching kids develop, because I know that a lot of them don't even realize how great they're going to be. I see some of them doing some of the same knucklehead things I did, and I'm like, oh, my God. 
I did that, you know, I, and, and, I, and, and but I'm not going to say to them that, you know, oh, you, you are doing what I, I'm not going to beat them down with I am going to laugh and have that flashback that my mother used to say. My mother used to say, I tried some of them same tricks when I was your age. And, and I always laugh because I remember in my mind, but especially when I was mad at her, when she said, I said, you were never my age. You know? <laughs> Because isn't that how we think of parents? We don't think they were ever our age. You, know, you don't understand as if they were never our age, all right? So, okay, let's get to some poetry because this is also another uh, uh, venture that I'm getting ready to reinforce in my speaking business is, is, you know, I started my motivational speaking business based on using my poetry. God said to me, Sporty, you're going to use your poetry to uplift people and, in, and enrich their lives. So I'm going to start reading more of my poetry, not calling it spoken word. And, uh, no, I read poetry. And my poetry, I call it spoetry, S-P-O-E-T-R-Y. Sporty's poetry opens emotions to reach you. Because that's how we make our connections in life, as, not just as a, as a speaker, but as a parent, as an adult as a teammate, as an, a coworker, as a friend, when you can reach somebody at an emotional level and how they feel, then that's when you cement your relationship. And sometimes that cement blocks you out, P.S., by the way, but I always like to end on a good note because sometimes that cement keeps you in and keeps you a part of it. So this first poem is from my book, which is a poetic tribute to God's greatest gift to and source of mankind, women. It's called, Do You Have Any Idea How Fine You Are? That's the book. The poem I'm going to read is called The Steel Ceiling, S-T-E-E-L, The Steel Ceiling. And, uh, 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 is it? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. Okay, well, now that means I'm going to read four poems to you, okay? Because it's, the, it's called The Steel Ceiling, and then that goes right into what I call the Just Us System. And the steel ceiling was written to uh, to a, a group of women, and uh, and the just us system was actually written through the eyes of a group of female attorneys. So steel ceiling, I, I will read um, somewhat generically, but the just us system. When you hear that, recognize that that's me taking on the the personification of a woman uh, uh, expressing herself. So this. Um, the, the steel ceiling. Glass? Isn't that something you can see through? And can't you use it to magnify smaller objects to get a better understanding? Glass? Isn't it possible to use it to look at your reflection and see yourself in the environment surrounding you? Glass? Glass ceiling? Doesn't it break when you drop it? And you just have to watch your step for moments and walking around if you don't have on any shoes. And at least the sound of it slam against the pavement conjures up feelings of empathy, pity, or nervousness, not lingering chills of fear, helplessness, or destruction. Glass, ladies, and some gentlemen, success is with you, not where you are. So don't let the steel ceiling stop you. Because a lot of times we call it the glass ceiling, but it's a steel ceiling. And that moves us, that paints us the bond that we need to have to deal with the just us system. And this is how I read the intro in the book. It's a, it's a tribute through the eyes of female attorneys coming together to upgrade awareness. When we feel good about ourselves, we do a better job of sharing with those around us. The just us system. Have we got that much imagination or fear of us living in a world of equals? A world that affords you and I a level view of each playing field. No sudden turns, hidden agendas, quoted quotas, coded quotas, or twists of faith. Just you and I, we, the people upon whose backs this great country was nurtured, we, the very people who gave birth and support to mankind, embellishing its frailties, we, visionaries, spirited women and net worlders who get down to business above and beyond the nuts and bolts of he said, she said gender gaps to support one another. Have we got that much imagination or fear? 
of us living a world in a world of equals. Oh, but what fun we'd have. Bud Light, bear, ball games, and bear bellies. One cocktail dress that requires only that we change the bow tie. Locker room interviews from the waist up on a day where you did so well because you focused on playing through cramps. We, the people whom God made to bring balance into this world. Pinching butts, begging, believing, honey, you were great. Being crowned the queen of machismo, my sisters, I think I can wait. Wait for God's truth to unfold, to understand that inequality is no more than a word. For your 100% is not my 100%, just like an alligator is not a bird. And though I'd rather fly than lurk underwater, I'm no better because I made it up here. Us in a just system means everything. And it starts with those who care. And not only do we have that kind of imagination, it's something we don't fear. My sisters out there, I want you to recognize that the just us system is the justice system. It's something that we all need to embrace and appreciate. Those of you in the, in the, um, in the law field and attorney fields, please continue to do all you can because we know that you're making your best moves possible. And again, the steel, the steel ceiling is just a twist and a play on that word of the glass ceiling. Because I think that years ago, uh, ages and decades ago, or decades and ages ago, it was called the glass ceiling as a way to say, you can still, you, you can still see the top, you know, because that way they say, you know, what society and corporate America in some in instances was saying is, you can, if you can see the goal, then you can reach it. So upper management or promotions was the, was the goal, and it was seeable, so therefore it was attainable. That's why they called it the glass ceiling, because that way, again, you could see it. But that's why I call it the steel ceiling, because you can't see through steel. And sometimes we are just, and we and you are just not allowed the, uh, the option to move forward. But moving forward is one of the things that I did for this next poem that I'm going to to recite to you. And this poem was actually, it's in my book, uh, Your Name Came to Mind. This was written, uh, well, it was, it, this was written like in 2004. And the book is published in 2006. But it, it's about, uh, uh, and there's a bunch of them, but let me read the intro in the book. And P.S., by the way, that's one of the things I like to do in my books of poetry is tell you why I wrote the poem. Because one of the things that I always found was challenging when I, in English class, when we did poetry, was interpretation, was where one person would say this, and another person would say, well, this is what I think the poet is saying, and this is what I think the poet is saying. And then the teacher tend to have the last word of what the poet was saying. Why? Why does the teacher necessarily know more than the student who could be a cr creative mind about what the poet was thinking? So what I like to do in my poems, is the majority of them, depending on what they are, I like to explain what I was thinking. So therefore, after you have the discussion, you can look and see what I was saying about it. And that way somebody can be right. Wouldn't it be wonderful for a kid to say, wow, I got it. I didn't know what the poet was thinking. Wouldn't that encourage them to maybe write a poem to feel better? Because a lot of people say, well, I'm not good at writing poetry. Well, if you know what the poet was saying and you say, well, you know what? I kind of think that same way. Well, there's your step to being a good poet. Folks, it's always about trying to encourage people, catch people doing something right so that they will be willing and looking forward to take the next step. But we focus sometimes too much on people doing something wrong. And we want to wait to the performance review to tell them all these bad things about it. Stop catching them doing something right and encouraging them on the way. So this says, uh, it comes after a poem I call Break the Chain. Willing to break the chain were hundreds of public aid recipients I met through various welfare-to-work programs. These programs had a mandate to reintroduce people who had been on welfare to the world of work. These next 10 poems, but I'm only going to read one, were written through the eyes of women and men who were caught up in the system, human beings shackled with the stereotype of being lazy, negative people milking the system for years, not wanting to work wanting an easy job where they got paid for doing little or nothing or preferring to sit and watch TV. 
people who I found proved to be spiritual and concerned parents, some whom had only been on aid for less than a year, many nervous or even scared of the life change on their horizon. And yes, a life change, not a job. And as you will see, people happy to join in, join in focusing on the positive. Each poem was created through the eyes and the words of audience members. So the one I'm going to read to you is called Creating a New You. And this was to a class uh, of, uh, I think it was about 22 females only. Creating a New You. While thinking about what your child could be, should be, or would be, don't pass up the opportunity to ask, and what about me? For yours is the gift of creation. What you make is not easily replaced. So take your time and enjoy yourself. Understand that all you've done won't go to waste. For among your creations is an upgraded you, someone nobody else can duplicate or be. And a part of that creation is that you recognize your voice and your vision of, is of someone you can see. So far, you've made the moves that got you to this place called right. Stop to give yourself credit. It didn't happen overnight. You've been persistent, sacrificial, even foolish, some may say. You've proven to yourself that you're a survivor, not concerned about winning or losing as much as the blessing to be able to play. So as you prepare your basketball stars, your firemen, nurses, doctors, and lawyers, lawyers and ask them to pass each test, let your B be sure to remind them how important it is to be respected and always your best. Meanwhile, know that this is not a prepared follow-up, but a follow-up prepared for you. You are important and deserve that queenly treatment. Enjoy your new power and what you can do. Always remember to respect our women and know that they are doing all they can. And women, take some time to relax. You know, you know, you don't have to be superwoman all day. You know, you've done a lot. Let me tell you, I always said if, if I had had kids, you know, I would not be watching the birth. I would be in the waiting room. They would wait, name the waiting room after me because there's no way I would want to see that pain that y'all have to go through. So hats off to you, mother. Okay, but the thing is, again, women and, you know, not just mothers, but women, you know, but especially mothers in this case, take some time to relax and rest yourself. You know, yeah, you're worried about what your kids are going to be, what your kids are going to do. But if you don't take care of you, you can't help your kid. So take care of yourself mentally, physically and spiritually. And that will continue to help you be the blessing that you are to the world. And so, again, this final poem doesn't come with an explanation. The words are in the poem. And this one was written in 2006. So what I have, I had 2000, uh, um, 2000, 2004, and now 2006, just finding ways to uplift our women. And this one is called Let the Flowers Grow. Let the flowers grow. You see, they don't even know how pretty their petals are. They know they need water and love to grow, yet they don't know where to get it or what kind is good for them. You see, they don't recognize the disguises water has. Water is in beer, alcohol. Water grows drugs and tobacco, cooks cocaine. And yes, water is in love making, where the grower says to the growee, but he's only faking. He's faking like it's good, he's good, and that he believes God is good, when all he wants is to wet his wood. And we all know that wet wood, wet wood won't let the flowers grow. So would you mind? Would you mind having a mind to not let a mind be a behind? And as you think you have to touch that flower, remember, realize that its prick needs to be a verb and your self-control a reality. For the reality is that your flashback is a lie and one that you can't recapture. You see, the new roots you're trying to plant don't dig deep enough, Daddy-O, and your sprinkle will only spoil what you soil. So that's a message to try to remind our, you know, sugar daddies. I ain't hating on sugar daddies. You do what you got to do. But 
older guys, because not sugar daddies. A lot of times sugar daddies are very respectful to women. But we got some older guys preying on our younger women, you know, based on their inexperience and, and messing with their feelings and their hearts. You know, don't do it. You know, you know, get a woman your age. You know, I, I you know, personally, I have a uh, my my little formula is like, remember Woolworth? We used to call it the five and ten cent store. Well, I think five and ten. You know, I like uh, I, I, my dating age range is a woman five years older and between five years older and between ten years younger. You know, I, I don't want to date somebody that's twenty years younger. You know, it's it, it's it's personal choice, but the main thing is whatever you do, whatever choice you make to do that, it's your life. And don't do it to take advantage of somebody. If you know, if if it's a situation, because a lot of times the younger women are looking for an older guy, you know, based on something that's happened in their life. No, come on, every, I'm not going to stand here and psychoanalyze analyze because everybody is who they are. But try to have the sincerity in your purpose and your reason for dating anybody or bringing anybody into your life. This doesn't always have to be dating. Like I said, I've got a lot of adopted nieces and little sisters. Girls who, who I've sat and mentored and, and talked them through some of their boy issues, their boyfriend issues, and, and some of their husband issues, you know. And, and, I, and I laugh because I, I want to say to you, young ladies, uh, I appreciate you because you haven't trusted me like that. And I appreciate your parents who have also, who also trusted me. This is, a, is, this is largely, by the way, with my young girls um, from the Boys and Girls Club of Chicago, the Dr. Martin Luther Boys and Girls Club of Chicago, because I met a lot of their parents, and I used to teach a public speaking class, and so I had a lot, you know, a lot of little girls that, that, that were friending me, and I was able to be a big brother to them and help them. And, and there were times that where, either, especially once I grew older and they grew older, I'd take them out to lunch if they just said they need to talk. And, and, and their parents trusted me. I appreciate that, and I never violated that, this, which is why sometimes, and I don't want to get slightly off the subject and bring us right back, is why I, I have a hard time with people who, you know, child molesters. I don't, I don't happen to have a very big heart for understanding them. I, understand, I, I will be willing to agree that it's an, it's an illness. And it, and it needs to be treated, but I'm not going to feel, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be supportive of them because um, most illnesses uh, exacerbate when you refuse to get the treatment. You know, that's the pe those are the people who I tend to have the problem with, the ones who know they need the treatment and they refuse to take it. And I'm, I'm totally conscious of, of the need, okay? So, again... Take care of the women in your life. Uh, women who are posting hashtag Me Too, know that there's someone who believes that there's not just a, another woman, but there's a man on the other side of the desk who understands. Don't just, don't give up. That's the main thing. Don't give up. You know, th this is an issue that's being more supported in the media. Uh, uh, you know, and, and I think that if, if we um, uh, lose sight of the energy that needs to be behind it, we lose sight of our future because women... You are the, the women are the ones who produce our, our young boys and, and men and young, young ladies and women. You know, you have the babies. So we really need you to respect yourself and feel good about who you are. Uh, don't let people, you know, keep you down because somebody is going to be like their job to pull you down. So don't let them keep you down. Men, uh, there's an organization called a call to men org that talks about how important it is for men to step up and respect our women. So they're doing something to help the situation. Uh, I, a call to men, um, teenagers. I have a, a subsidiary website called HeyUglyUGLY.org, and UGLY is Unique, Gifted, Lovable You. We have uh, we're, we're combating uh, self-esteem, suicide, um, uh, self-esteem, my bad, self-esteem, suicide, bullying. And so, you know, those are issues that it, it will, you know, move toward the sexual harassment, too. So there are avenues out there. Please find ways to share the avenues and help them work for you and, and, and yours. Uh, once again, thanks for joining Glue Wednesday. Uh, please support breast cancer awareness, not just in October, but always. And I know you do, but there's never, never anything wrong with saying it and reminding people. So happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Happy Father's Day, Happy uh, Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Ramadan. You know, come on, celebrate, y'all. you got different people in your life, and they are different races, they're different ages, they're different ethnicities, they're different genders. 
uh, and, you know, celebrate everybody. We start out by celebrating yourself. Hashtag me too should mean that I am going to celebrate who I am. And I meant to come up with an acronym for me too, but I'm not going to worry about it because I'm, uh, I, I want to make sure that we celebrate women, uh, our young sisters and, and nieces and nephews and mothers and wives, you know, uh, with, with what they want to be on. So thank you. God bless you. I'll see you next week on Glue Wednesday, where God's love does undoes everything. And if you're watching this on YouTube, when you hit a little, I, you know, those are when people hit the like buttons and the love buttons and they go across the screen. I see them on the screen on, on Facebook, but you won't see them on the screen when you look on YouTube. And again, by, P.S., by the way, please go to YouTube and subscribe to my station. You'll be able to see all of my Glue Wednesday posts as well as some other posts that I've done. Go to my website, sportyking.com, and you can find some uh, uh, you can find some videos there, information on my speaking business. I always need referrals and repeat business. Uh, my product page has the books that I read from, and I always, you know, re-mention those on YouTube as well. So, you know, your support is always needed because the key is we've got to fuel the messenger. If I'm your messenger, I'm proud of you, and I thank you because you are mine as well. God bless you. See you next week. Yeah.